Sometimes planning for cross country means more than considering 91-103. But what else should you do? We know 91-103 NW Craft says all the things that you have to do, but what else should you do? If you are flying VFR in your cross country, hopefully you're getting VFR radar advisory services, otherwise known as flight following. If you want to do some next level cross country flying, yes, get flight following, but to be a pro, ask for it in the correct order. I'll admit, I did not know this until I listened to several episodes of the Opposing Bases podcast. If you're not listening to that podcast, you should be. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. The order that you give your information to ATC matters to them because it goes in a particular order. So what's the flight following order you should give? It's your call sign, location, it's the destination you're going to, it's the type of aircraft that you're in, and what's your VFR cruising altitude. Just like that. If you do it in that order, you're going to cut down in the transmissions back and forth between you and ATC. ATC also may give you a gold star as well. Being a better cross-country pilot means using the national airspace system as it was designed. And to do that, ATC needs all the information that they can get from us. And what's a good way to do that? Know your airplane's ICAO equipment and surveillance modes and codes. On the ICAO flight plan, there's a section for surveillance and equipment codes. So if you don't know what those codes are for your airplane, Four Flight has a ton of great information on it. Seth Lake, a DPE from Arkansas, has a terrific podcast about how to find your ICAO surveillance and equipment codes. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And before we go to the next tip, if you like this kind of content, I'd really appreciate a touch and go on the like and subscribe button. Thank you. Weather is obviously a big part of cross-country planning and then execution. Beyond the typical aviation weather that we use for flight planning, the FAA has started to install weather cameras throughout the country. An actual real live image of a mountain pass in Colorado or a smaller airport in Idaho to see what's actually happening at those locations, knowing how to use the equipment that's in your plane. I did a safety webinar for my flying club recently. It was the most attended safety webinar and it was on the Garmin 430. There are so many pilots, especially pilots that didn't grow up with G GPS, that don't know how to use the equipment in their airplane. They were just never taught because it wasn't around when they learned to fly to no fault of their own. Take the time to learn, especially your GPS and your airplane, beyond direct enter enter. The other piece of equipment that you should really know how to use if it's equipped is the autopilot. When I check out pilots in our flying club, I'd say probably 80% of them have never been around, seen, touched, or used an autopilot. But knowing how to use this autopilot could actually save your life. So if your plane has an autopilot, please know how to use it. Another thing to do to enhance your cross-country experience is, what else do you need to bring with you? I can't tell you the number of times that I've arrived at an airport and I had just assumed, well, of course they're going to have tie-downs there and no tie-downs. I've definitely learned that lesson many times over. Do you need to bring a tow bar? What else do you need to bring? All right, you got to plan for the environment. So what does that mean? Well, if you're taking off at sea level and you're going up to 9, 10, 12,000 feet, it's probably going to be colder up there. So you need to be prepared for that. No one wants to get up at altitude and be shivering the whole time. Those are just a few cross country tips. I hope they help. I did a part one of this series. I'll link it here. Thanks for watching. Safe flying, everybody.